Today I'm going to talk to you about team manager triggers. What a trigger is, is what tells the team manager to execute a transaction from the PLC to the SQL database. If I come over here to my team manager software, I can right click on automation and create a new trigger if I needed to, but since I already have one configured, we're going to look at it. I'm going to double click and open it up. You can name it whatever you want. There's three different types of triggers. The one I have it set on right now is periodic, and what that means is that it's scanning to check for this condition to be evaluated as true. So I can change this. The minimum would be to 250 milliseconds. And then this condition changes, so I've pulled in this production count tag. So if the production count changes, from a one to a two, the T manager will execute a transaction, and if it's a two to a three on the next one, it'll execute the transaction. But that scan period is just how fast it's scanning. There's also a scheduled trigger type, and so I could come in here and set it to a specific time or a specific hour to where it would execute no matter what, and it's not evaluating a tag at that point. Or you could set it up to to if it, you wanted to put in some logic in there to evaluate if it equals a certain number or anything like that, you could do that also. There's um, event driven is the third type, and what that is is if you set up a message instruction in Studio 5000. If I hit F1, it pulls open the T Manager help file, and I can come down here and click on logic message instruction and that shows you what the message instruction needs to look like that you would configure in Studio 5000 and so that gives you more control of the team manager of when it fires so you would actually be putting this in your PLC code to tell the team manager when to execute and this is just the message settings that you would need to configure for it to work with team manager I'll exit this go back to our periodic I talked about this briefly already, but here's the conditions. You can see there's a big list of them. You could set it equal. So you could set up a tag and set it equal to another tag. You could set it to where it's equal to a constant value if you wanted to do that, or you could set it to where if it's less than something, then you, it would execute the transaction at that point. There's also tolerance in here, so you could put in a number of one or two and so if it's within one or two of that value being true it would execute at that point. There's also an advanced status tag that you could set up in Studio 5000 so you would configure this in Studio 5000. I have one set up and this status tag looks like this. You would need to have these values in here and what that is is it tells you a count of how many transactions have fired if you've had any errors if you've had any scan timeouts, scan timeout overruns or execution overruns. Um, so if you created this UDT tag in Studio 5000 and then you pulled it into T Manager, T Manager would populate those values. But note that those are refreshed only every 30 seconds and it's not actual live data. So if you're firing faster than that, it would take it a little bit to catch up and give you the actual values. In advanced right here is where you would configure a scan overrun timer or an execution overrun timer that I just mentioned. So that if it's kind of a good way to debug to see if you're executing as fast as you want or if the team manager is performing as fast as you want, you can use that as a debug tool. Down here in the bottom is message path links and it shows the message paths that I've configured and that this trigger is used in and then there's the handshake mode. Uh, what the handshake mode is, is it tells the trigger when it's rearmed and ready to fire again. So if I click on this guy and click edit, since I'm doing an insert, I have these three. So in queues, the default, and what that means is that the T manager has grabbed the PLC tag values and it stored them and it's in queue to fire to the database. So it hasn't sent them to the database yet, but it's pulled the values out of the PLC 
and that's what it defaults to. So when it's at that point in in the message path of sending it, that trigger is rearmed. So it grabs the values out of the PLC and it's got them to send to the database. And so the PLC values can change. The team managers got them stored away to send them to the to the database and that trigger could fire again and those values wouldn't be lost. Uh, if I come to the top and click on the last tab, transaction log, you can set up a transaction log that'll record all the transactions that this trigger is executed. You could also set up the different sizes of the files you want and before it would send it, you could you can also set it to where it sends those files or it just stores them locally. But if you wanted to send them, it would have to be either over FTP or SMTP and those settings are right there to configure that. And that's it for triggers. If you have a topic you would like covered, please leave it in the comments section below.